Hello again. All right, so welcome to putting theory into practice, how GitHub uses Figma for annotations and training. Uh, house note that there are images in this presentation, and I've integrated descriptions of decorative images into my narration, and for functional images, I'll give an explicit description. My name is Alexis Lucio, I use they, them pronouns. I'm a tall, Latina, non-binary person with dark, short, dark hair. Today I'm wearing a two-piece leather jumpsuit that uh, Sam says is vibes, uh, white sneaks, and a large eagle-shaped bolo tie. Well, I'm here in person, my co-presenter, Jan, who made the awesome toolkit you're gonna learn more about shortly, is out sick, but here in spirit. So please send his family some good vibes if you have capacity. We're both senior accessibility designers on GitHub's design infrastructure team, where we help product designers annotate their work in different ways. So this talk is gonna cover a quick intro into design annotations, how we're using them in accessibility trainings, and how Jan's integrated them into Primer, GitHub's design system. So hold on to your seats, because this is definitely a lightning talk. So let's talk about design annotations. When designers add annotations to designs in Figma, they document design intent that might not exist in visuals or component properties alone. For instance, an image description or alternative text, what mobile keyboard or keyboards are used in an online form, and even how a page is meant to be navigated regardless of what assistive technology is used. There are a lot of considerations like this, and they can make or break an experience on the web, especially for folks with access barriers. Design annotations are often sold as a preventative solution to design bugs and audit issues. And they're important for other reasons, but the two that Jan and I like to highlight are that one, they lead to a higher standard. Designs are more accessible, and the experiences that we build are better for the people using them. And two, they help designers and developers work better together. And that's why we're here today, to help bridge communication gaps between design and engineering. This is a big deal here at GitHub where we work with all time zones all over the world and more often than not, we communicate asynchronously. And so there are many tools to help with annotating designs, but last year the inclusive design team over at CVS Health released an open source accessibility annotation kit for web and iOS. It's a robust and popular tool that was built with accessibility principles in mind in order to help create documentation that's easy to read and follow. And so after some internal research, our team decided to adopt it and Jan used it to create a new design toolkit for GitHub. He even added more functionality, combining it with some of our existing tools, such as an interactive accessibility design checklist that you can see at our demo booth later. And the best part about this toolkit is that you don't need to be a specialist to use it. Sometimes product designers need to document at a high level of accessibility, like semantic headings and page structure. Other times they need to dive into the deep end by specking complex and or bespoke components. And so our goal is to make a tool that can meet teams where they're at to be as detailed or high level as they want. And so tools like this can be fantastic for facilitating shared understanding between design and engineering, but regardless of our discipline, it's only useful if people understand how to use the tools. And that's where training comes in. We expose designers to our toolkit through an educational program called Accessibility Design Bootcamp. This is a live program that consists of exercises, discussions, and knowledge shares to raise awareness of web accessibility best practices and the role designers play in creating accessible products. If you want to learn more, check out the blog post that I wrote about the one-year anniversary of these boot camps over on the GitHub blog. Now, every facet of boot camp can be mapped back to four core values. Relevant, engaging, actionable, and safe. And the annotation kit exercise is no exception. Image description, there's a screenshot of a Figma file with a spotlight on Jan Martin, who is annotating a GitHub Enterprise Repository homepage. Across the screen are six colorful cursors, and surrounding the wireframe are three annotations for heading structure and notes actively being worked on. We just completed the second iteration of this exercise last month, where we debuted the toolkit Jan created and used wireframes that the bootcamp attendees designed themselves. This embodies our value of relevancy and increases the designer's muscle memory with the toolkit. Win-win. Building on this relevancy, we tackle two different workflows in our exercise that are common for designers. Those being, I need to annotate my screens in preparation for engineering handoff, and I'm creating a component and need to consider accessibility in its creation. And it was this last workflow where Jan and I recognized that there's more to do about integrating the annotation toolkit to our design system. And we highlighted this because as accessibility practitioners, we know that design systems are one of the most efficient ways to scale accessibility. With accessible components, we can ensure fewer bugs when designs are being built out. And if the components are accessible from the start, 
then we don't have to annotate them with each use case. <laughs> the thing is, it's not that simple. It's never that simple. When designers hand off in Figma, engineers get the visuals and the component properties. If the team is using Figma's new Code Connect feature, they may even get some useful code. And yet, we may still miss key parts of our design. Here's an example. Uh, I've got a primer button here. It's green, has a lightning bolt icon, and the label says, this button does something. As people who build products, we know that there are many choices we can make, even within a design system component. There are also times that it's reasonable to separate visual presentation from semantics. Some examples using this primer button are that while it looks like a button, it might function like a link, meaning engineers need to use a different React component. This button could submit some user data, but might be part of a UI that doesn't look like a form, meaning engineers need to know to add specific semantics that aren't necessarily in the component by default. And at certain screen widths, the lightning bolt icon may be the only element displaying on the button, meaning it needs alternative text in order for its functionality to be known to blind users. And that's just the button. <laughs> like, imagine more complex components. And seeing this, we knew integrating with Primer was necessary to make sure we weren't withholding important context from the engineers. As we explored how we could capture design intent when using our Primer components, we found some serious benefits. Not only can we avoid redundant work, ensure more accessible experiences, and maintain a high technical standard without leaving vital decisions to chance, but we can do all of that while spending a lot less time doing the actual annotating. We do that by using annotations built specifically for each individual primer component with the design intent preset. Let me show you an example. Here we've got a mock of an accordion component in Figma with a set of annotations over it that a developer would use to build for the first time. These include heading levels, semantics for detail and summary, landmarks, and decorative icons. Some of these have corresponding notes in the margins with additional information. When a designer uses this accordion, they don't need to add all six of these labels and four of the notes in the margins for an engineer to build it well. The accordion already has these specs built in, so there's actually a lot of redundant work that's happening. However, there are two important things that we should annotate. The first is the heading level of each item within the accordion, and the second is the optional title up top. If we don't specify these things, we're leaving it the chance that a page's heading structure will break or that the experience will be confusing for people to understand and navigate the page. And so instead of dragging 10 annotations onto our canvas from the new asset library and filling them out with some mildly technical stuff, we drag one accordion annotation to the component and add a note in the margins to make the heading levels clear. Easy. But demonstrating this with an accordion is simple enough, and again, the stakes go way up with more complex components. We also don't know how familiar an engineer may be with Primer, so we include links to our design system documentation sites for quick reference. In the same spirit, we wanted to make it easier for designers to understand how to fill out these annotations and how to best use the component itself. So Jan built inline design guidance into the annotations. This and the aforementioned links to documentation can easily be hidden within Figma. So if you know how to use it, you don't need to see it. And this is all part of our new design toolkit. We call them our primary accessibility presets. Now we're still in very preliminary stages of building, but we've started with the components most often used on github.com. So if you're curious about how they work, come by the demo booth. While we've tested this a lot with product designers, we haven't gotten as much experience with engineers and accessibility specialists beyond our team. So please come give us feedback. Or if you want to get really technical, you can leave Jan a question for him to follow up with you on. You can also inquire about next steps, including in-depth design toolkit training, scaling the toolkit to non-designers, or exploring new ways of automating annotations. Or you can let us know what your organization is doing for accessibility. We love a good cross-pollination. In the meantime, thanks for listening and hope to see you at config.